What is a computer? A computer is an electronic device that accepts data as input, processes data into information, stores information for future uses, and outputs the information whenever it is needed. Computers, by a wider definition, have been around for thousands of years. One of the earliest computers was the abacus, series of beads arranged on metal rods. Beads could be slid back and forth to operate on numbers. This was a very rudimentary device and is not commonly thought of as a computer in modern times. Our idea of computers involves electricity and electronics. Electricity makes computers much more efficient. The first computers used an incredible amount of electricity, which changed voltages in vacuum tubes to operate the computer. These computers were given instructions using punch cards, and were behemoths taking up entire floors of buildings. Only the more privileged universities and government facilities had access to them. In the 1960s, the vacuum tube was replaced by the integrated circuit and transistor. These greatly reduced the size and power consumption of computers. They were still very large by today's standards but more institutions had access to computing power than ever before. At the end of the decade, the microchip was invented, which reduced the size of the computer even more. By the end of the 1970s, computers were widespread in businesses. Using a computer involved typing on a terminal, a keyboard and monitor connected to a large central computer. Soon, parts became small enough to allow many users to have a computer at their home. Thus the personal computer, or PC, was born. Since then, personal computers have become tremendously more efficient. They are much smaller, and yet have seen extreme performance gains. In addition to these improvements, computers have become affordable enough for many families worldwide. Hardware is the stuff you can touch, as opposed to software which is abstract and exists only in a virtual world as computer code. Hardware is made of materials found in the universe and are subject to the laws of physics. Inside the computer case are various components that allow the computer to run. CPU, the central processing unit, or CPU, does nearly all the calculating. It is the main microchip in the computer that distributes tasks to all other parts of the computer. When most people talk about the processor, or chip, it is actually the CPU they are referring to. RAM, random access memory, commonly called just memory, holds computer code that needs to be operated on quickly. This allows information held in memory to quickly interact with the CPU. The amount of RAM available is limited and therefore needs to be constantly cleared and refilled. Don't worry, all computers do this automatically. RAM is just one part of the computer that determines your speed. RAM is referred to as volatile memory because the information stored in it disappears when the power is turned off. Hard drives and flash drives, on the other hand, contain non volatile memory, which is like paper, it can be destroyed or erased but when properly taken care of, can last forever. RAM is plugged into special slots on the motherboard. There is a large link, known as a bus, from the memory to the CPU. Each motherboard has a fixed number of slots for RAM, often two or four slots. Only certain types of RAM and sizes of RAM can be used with any motherboard. So before buying, check your motherboard details. Hard drive. A partially dismantled hard drive, showing the disk inside. The hard drive is the main storage area in the computer. It is usually where you put your data to be stored permanently, until you choose to erase it. It keeps data after the power is turned off. The official name for a hard disk is hard disk drive, HDD, but is almost always referred to as hard drive. Virtually all of your data is stored on your hard drive. A hard drive is composed of disks, where the data is recorded magnetically onto the surface, similar to records, CDs, and DVDs. The size of the hard drive, 
today's are usually in gigabytes, is determined by how dense, small, the recording is. Many of today's major programs such as games and media creating and editing programs like Photoshop, and files, such as pictures, music, or video, use a considerable amount of space. Most low-end computers, as of 2011, are shipped with a 160 gigabytes, gigabyte, or larger hard drive. In 2019, it is common to find desktop computers and laptops with 1000 gigabytes, 1 terabyte, hard drive or more. As an example, an average MP3 file takes between 7.5 and 15 megabytes, megabytes, of space. A megabyte is 1 1024th of a gigabyte, thus allowing most new computers to store thousands of such files. Users who wish to store a lot of media on a computer will want a larger hard drive. As will users who want to store numerous large programs, like modern games, or videos, which both require a lot of space. A full-size film is over 4 gigabytes. Video games today are commonly downloaded but used to be distributed via DVD discs that store data, called DVD-ROM, read-only memory, which can be read off the disc, but not modified. A DVD can be anywhere from 4.7 GB for a single-layered disc to 8.5 GB for a double-layered disc, and many large programs are already taking up more than one disc. Another concern for users who want higher performance is hard drive speed, measured in RPM, rotations per minute. Most desktop hard drives today are 7200 RPM models. Lower-end 4200 RPM models are not commonly seen in new systems, other than laptops. Higher-end 10,000 RPM hard drives are generally seen only in gaming and other extremely high-performance computers due to their cost. For example, a 1 terabyte 7200 RPM drive costs around 50, as of January, 2017 while a 1 terabyte 10,000 RPM drive costs 120 or more, as of January 2017. A 1 terabyte SSD starts at about 250. Hard drives are constantly increasing in size, both because technology allows, and because of demand for more storage space. For example, an Apple iMac in the late 90s shipped with a 4 gigabytes hard drive, and sold for 1,300 US, although it should be noted that the cost alone is not indicative of the hard drive, or vice versa. A modern iMac sells for 1000 US and carries a 1 terabyte hard drive with a 21-inch screen and faster processor, January 2017. Compared to the original IBM PC, which carried only a 10 megabytes hard drive, or 10 1024 of a GB. The largest HDD in 2016 was more than 15 terabytes. Many computers already have more than 2 terabytes, and within decades petabytes, thousands of terabytes, and even exobytes, thousands of petabytes, will not be unheard of. SSD, the SSD, or otherwise known as a solid-state drive, is a storage device using RAM modules instead of a spinning disk. It is like a hard disk drive, but these storage devices are much faster than traditional hard disk drives, HDDs because they don't have to spin up. The SSD can have transfer speeds up to 10x as fast because of this. They are quieter and more expensive than HDDs. Peripherals are hardware attached to a computer, but external to the main case that houses the CPU, hard drives, and other such equipment. They are basically devices that allow people to communicate to the computer. It is generally a good idea, although not as important as it used to be, to add and remove hardware from the computer while it is turned off. Things such as USB storage devices and keyboards, mice can generally be inserted and removed at a whim with no consequence, however more advanced things such as printers should be installed according to the manufacturer's instructions, 
which may include shutting down your computer. There are wired and wireless keyboards and mice. Wired keyboards usually plug into a USB slot. Older style keyboards use the PS2 socket at the back of a desktop. PS2 to USB adapters are available. Wireless keyboards work by Bluetooth, infrared, IR, or radio frequency, RF. Bluetooth is built into most laptops so a Bluetooth keyboard or mouse can connect with no extra equipment. Most desktops do not have Bluetooth built in but a USB Bluetooth key can be used to add it. RF keyboards and mice need a receiver plugged into the computer. The transmitter is usually built into the keyboard or mouse. The mouse is an input device which is primarily used by physically moving the device across a surface. This causes a pointer symbol, called a cursor, to move across the screen. The other input comes from pressing a button while the cursor is over an object on the monitor, or clicking. All mice have at least one button, with the most common layout having three. Gaming mice may have seven buttons. One button mice. The Apple Mighty Mouse is the only mouse known to most people which uses a single button. This button is usually activated by pushing on the front of the mouse, or pushing the entire mouse down. The right click is done by pressing a control or control key on the keyboard while pressing the main button. These are only used with Macintosh OS, such as Mac OS X. Two button mice, the second most common layout, more common in older computers, which has a button on the left and right, usually for the index and middle finger. While less useful than a three button mouse, they are, when teamed with a standard keyboard, capable of performing almost all computer tasks. Three button mice, the most common layout, fundamentally the same as a two button mice, but with a third button, the middle button, added between the left and right click buttons. While the mouse technically has three buttons, this may be confusing to some users, as the middle center click button is also a scroll wheel. This design allows the user to scroll through documents, make selections, and do other tasks by moving a finger. The other way to is to press an arrow key or page up, page down key on a keyboard. The center button can also be pressed inwards to create a middle click button. There are two other major differences in mice, which is optical, laser mice, and ball mice. This is how the mouse tells where it is, with the laser measuring the distance it crosses when it is moved, and the ball measuring how it rotates. The laser is generally more accurate and less of a hassle to use, and can be used on more surfaces, but the ball mouse is cheaper. Ball mice are rarely seen today. The last important consideration when buying a mouse is size. You should always try to put your hand on a mouse and move it around, to see how well it feels in your hand. If it feels awkward, small, big, long, or short, look for something better not only will your hands thank you, but you will be more efficient. Media devices, floppy, CD-ROM, DVD, USB, these devices carry data, in the same way that a hard drive does, but are much more portable. They are the primary method of storing data outside of a computer, and the main method of transferring information between computers without the use of a network, such as the internet. There are three main types of these in use today. CD-ROM. Mostly read-only memory unless labeled, rewritable, capable of storing 700 megabytes of data, CDs have been the most common method of storing data for most of the last decade or so. They are being largely replaced by DVDs and USB drives. DVD, capable of storing 4.7 gigabytes of data in their single layer form and 8.5 gigabytes in their double layer form, they are the most common method today for most store-bought programs, as well as videos. USB, flash, while not usually used by commercial software, USB, sticks, and flash, cards, have become popular ways of storing data because of their ease of use and low cost. 
while sizes range from 2 GB on old units to 256 GB on larger, more expensive modern units. The average stick today is 4 or 8 GB, with an average 4 GB USB stick costing about 15 US. The floppy disk has been phased out. The monitor is the main method for the computer to produce output, in the same way a book has pages. A book filled with letters, but in a way you can't possibly understand or even see is of no use to you, and the same is true for a computer. While older monitors CRTs, were rather bulky like TVs, newer monitors or LCDs, are much more compact and can be easily lifted. Tip. To take proper care of your monitor, always be sure that the screen is not left on a static image for long periods of time. This can burn the image into the monitor, meaning that it will have a ghosting effect, even when that image is not displayed. This can not only be highly annoying, but in some cases, make it so the monitor needs to be replaced. To avoid this, either set a moving screensaver, which will trigger after a set amount of time, or simply turn the monitor off. If you have a printer attached to your computer you can print your information and keep a physical copy of data. Depending on what type of printer you have, you can print in color, double-sided or book form. The output quality of some printers goes from draft, to save ink, all the way to photo quality. What is software? Computer software, or simply software, also known as computer programs, is the non-tangible component of computers. Computer software contrasts with computer hardware, which is the physical component of computers. Computer hardware and software require each other and neither can be realistically used without the other. Computer software includes all computer programs regardless of their architecture. For example, executable files, libraries and scripts are computer software. Yet, it shares their mutual properties. Software consists of clearly defined instructions that upon execution, instructs hardware to perform the tasks for which it is designed. Software is stored in computer memory and cannot be touched. At the lowest level, executable code consists of machine language instructions specific to an individual processor typically a central processing unit CPU. A machine language consists of groups of binary values signifying processor instructions that change the state of the computer from its preceding state. For example, an instruction may change the value stored in a particular storage location inside the computer, an effect that is not directly observable to the user. An instruction may also, indirectly, cause something to appear on a display of the computer system, a state change which should be visible to the user. The processor carries out the instructions in the order they are provided, unless it is instructed to jump to a different instruction or interrupted. Application software uses the computer system to perform useful work or provide entertainment functions beyond the basic operation of the computer itself. System software is designed to operate the computer hardware, to provide basic functionality, and to provide a platform for running application software. System software includes Operating system, an essential collection of computer programs that manages resources and provides common services for other software. Supervisory programs, bootloaders, shells and window systems are core parts of operating systems. In practice, an operating system comes bundled with additional software, including application software, so that a user can potentially do some work with a computer that only has an operating system. Device driver, a computer program that operates or controls a particular type of device that is attached to a computer. Each device needs at least one corresponding device driver, thus a computer needs more than one device driver. Utilities, software designed to assist users in maintenance and care of their computers. Malicious software or malware, computer software developed to harm and disrupt computers. As such, malware is undesirable. 
Malware is closely associated with computer-related crimes, though some malicious programs may have been designed as practical jokes. Operating systems. The major software application on a computer is called the operating system. The operating system is like the driver of a car. While it might seem like it's only telling the car, computer, what to do, it is in fact also interfacing with the different parts of it, as well as taking any new input, say, a map, or instructions on where to go which equates to other software, and performing these tasks to the best of its ability. Although many things are compatible across platforms, more involved programs, such as photo editing tools and games, will not work across all platforms, in the same way that if you started giving your cab driver directions in French, he'd probably tell you to get out, unless you were of course, in France an operating system, aka, OS is the middleman between you and the computer. It creates an environment where the user can interact with the computer in an efficient manner. There are three major OS that you should consider using for your first desktop, notebook PC. Windows, the most recent edition of Windows is Windows 10 previous versions are Windows 8, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP, and so on. Mac, the second most common OS in desktop systems, Mac OS X is comparatively compared to Windows, although its market share is increasing. Macs have been designed to be very easy for people to use, and are thus a good choice for a first system, as long as you don't mind not having as many software and games options as Windows uses. Many Mac users are extremely loyal to the OS, due to the popularity of the iPod MP3 device, and various other Apple i devices. Linux, while it is also rare compared to Windows, Linux does have its advantages. Linux is open source, which means that anyone can change the code around and redistribute it as they want, resulting in many different versions. Though it can be daunting, a Google search can help the average person decide which version of the OS would be best for them. There is a wide range of versions, called distro, ranging from one that's meant to fit on a 50 megabytes business card sized CD to ones that are meant to be easier to use than Windows. The most popular Linux distro, Ubuntu, has a clean interface and a thorough help system.